Let's check in with Niagara Falls Mayor Jim Diodati. Jim, the Crush the Curve caravan last weekend was quite impressive. Tell us about how that came together and how it looked. You know, we know a lot of people are really hurting right now. Yep. They're, they're sad, depressed, anxious, whatever. We thought since we had to cancel the Canada Day Parade, you know, a lot of things are being canceled. Hockey, now we're looking at is baseball and soccer, and, and it's tough. You know, a lot of people are really struggling right now. They're out of work, they're out of sorts. And uh, some of the staff said, well, this Crush the Curve campaign, we've got billboards all over the city, service clubs, churches, businesses, they're all promoting this and whatnot. Why don't we, if the people can't come to the parade, well, let's bring the caravan to the people. So that's how it kind of started as this goofy idea. And we we're like, well, we're like, what? And they said, well, we'll get some cool cars, like the DeLorean from Back to the Future and Kit from Knight Rider and the General Lee from Dukes of Hazard and the, the old pumper truck from Christmas Story, uh, the old uh, Chippewa pumper truck, 1938, and all cool vehicles, dune buggies. So we decided to do it. We mapped out the city, and oh my God, the logistics, Mike, were huge. And we were able to do it. We looked at the street sweeper and snowplow paths, and we tried to come up with something that worked. Well, we put together something that within four days, we hit every corner of the city. People were waiting, Mike. They were cheering, banging pots and pans. They had bubble machines going. They had signs. People were in costumes. Um, they were doing Macarena dances, unicorns, rainbows. Uh, people were blowing uh, trumpets, tubas. Like, you name it. People were dancing, doing all crazy. They were clapping. They were, they kept saying thank you. And I think what it was, and it's funny, on my street, it's a Saturday morning, I came to my street. I'm having my coffee in the morning. And all of a sudden, I hear the siren going. And I thought, oh, my God. Oh, yeah, it's now. So I come running out. And then my one neighbor goes, uh, when it, so when are they supposed to come? And I said, well, I, now I think. I go, but don't get your hopes up too high. This is no Macy's Day Parade. And she said, are you kidding? Right about now, I'll take anything. So anyway, the way it was received was so amazing. And people are just grateful that we're able to give them just a little bit of hope, a little bit of a smile, a little bit of fun. And all the kids come pouring out. And people had signs waiting. And it was like a rock star reception. <laughs> Last weekend with the Sunshine Sunday, beautiful day, lots of people flocking to Niagara Falls. Were you concerned at all with the volume of visitors and whether or not they were able to continue physical distancing? I guess our attitude is you can't stop the wind, but you can adjust your sails. So we had to pivot and make sure our parks police who are doing a terrific job, making sure people are physically distancing. You know, because there was a great article in the Globe and Mail the other day that there's over 300 studies that have been done. There's been zero um, spread of uh, COVID-19 casually outdoors, zero. So we know that if they physically distance outside, it's a pretty safe place to be. Short of shutting the QEW down, I don't know what more we can do. Fort Erie has passed a bylaw, I believe, that uh, basically is telling Americans that you know, those Americans that come and live in Fort Erie for six months or four months of the year, they don't want them yet. So where are you as far as Niagara Falls and its opinion about opening up borders? It's not time. Yes, we do want our friends to come and visit us when the time is right. The time isn't right yet. And we don't think it's going to be like flipping on a light switch. It's going to be more like a dimmer switch, and it's going to be gradual. And eventually, and especially once they get things under control, I know they're working very hard. I was speaking with the mayor of Niagara Falls, New York, yesterday, and uh, Mayor Ray Stano, we're in the same boat. Uh, we just want to get things under control before we go spreading and even people going from community to community within the province and within the state. So we all feel the same way. We definitely want it open when the time is right. We're just not there yet. The thing I believe that we need to do a much better job of is testing, Mike, because here in Niagara, since this started around seven weeks ago, we've done ballpark 7,000 tests in Niagara. And I'll tell you, there's a group of people right now with a proposal coming to the region where we would open up a lab here in Niagara with testing of 5,000 people per day here in Niagara. So instead of 7,000 over seven weeks, we're talking 5,000 a day with same day results. So can you imagine if we could assure people with a sniffle 
that they are not COVID positive, that businesses could know all their employees are safe. We can go into every nursing home and make sure all the staff and all the residents are clear. That's what we need. And there's a proposal going forward led by some private businesses that are just doing this because it's the right thing to do. And I've got others that want to put seed money in to get the right equipment. And I should say, not just specific to COVID, but it'll be adaptable to other viruses in the future should they emerge as well. Well, let's hope we see that clinic open up. Thanks for your time today, Mayor.